Welcome to another episode of the Grappling Bulletin Podcast. Myself, Hal Teague, joined by Chase Smith, and in the back, we've got Corey Stockton. Today, of course, we will, as always, go through the major news stories from the world of jiu-jitsu and grappling, and we've got plenty. We've got the return of Gordon Ryan, the Musumichi siblings, unfortunately, out of who's number one, and a rivalry unlike any other is developing in the middleweight division. Let's go through the main news stories, the little grappling news roundup. Chase, kick us off. Musumichis. Yeah, you know, kind of a sad story here. Mikey and Tammy Musumichi, as mentioned, are out of WNO this weekend due to a bereavement in the family. We definitely hope to see them back soon uh, and get back into things there. But that means, of course, some things are changing around. But notably, Howell, we have Gordon Ryan stepping in. We do. Yes, he's coming in. Um, we'll get into that in a second. But, uh, you know, the, the, the change rounds on the Who's Number One card... Uh, I think that, uh, you know, it's important to, to mention that there's no replacement for, for mm, Gio Martinez because yes, yeah. the title match between between Mikey and Gio has been postponed until later in this year because, you know, you don't want to just find any old random opponent for Gio just to make up the numbers. No, Gio wants the title match with Mikey. It's an important match. There's still a lot on the line here and Gio is very understanding of the situation. Of course, we'll wait until Musumichi is ready to come back. But we did get a replacement for uh, Jesse Crane because Tammy Musumichi obviously is out as well. But we got uh, Sophia Casella stepping up. That's right. Thanks for pointing that out. How? Yeah, definitely excited to get Sophia Casella on the card. Someone that's been on our radar for quite a while now has a lot of success there training under Tom DeBloss. And this should be a banger. They're both ranked in the top 10. Uh, very exciting matchup here. And they will be, I believe, the final match on our prelims, if that's correct. correct. So yeah. that'll be free on Facebook and YouTube. Corey, you've been watching Sophia quite a lot recently, right? Yeah, uh, she, and she's been surging this year. Recently got her brown belt um, and is already, as of the beginning of this year, the uh, finisher's 115-pound champion, the finisher's 125-pound champion, and the Medusa 115-pound champion. So she has really had a, a successful start to 2022 and uh, her, her who's number one debut is up and coming. Man, racking up those wins, racking up those results, and I think that's the right way to get yourself onto who's number one, right? Mm-hmm. So stepping in at the last minute, I'm sure will be a little bit of a challenge, but it's a good match. Her and Jesse Crane, looking forward to that. Gordon Ryan, as you mentioned, Chase is back. He has slid in to replace his injured younger brother, Nicky Ryan, and will be facing Jacob Couch in the brand new main event of the Tezos Who's Number One presented by Fat Tire. Now titled Gordon Ryan versus Jacob Couch. Goes down March 25th uh, right here on uh, Flow Grappling. And that's Friday, by the way. <laughs> this is Friday. <laughs> it's not that far off. <laughs> I can't believe that this is, uh, this is basically Gordon's first real match in a year. Almost in exactly a calendar year. His last real match, because of course his exhibition against Philip Rowe was just that. It was an exhibition. It wasn't a real match. His last real match was against Wagner Hosha, March 26, 2021. <sighs> the world certainly has changed since then. A lot of things have happened. Um, but yeah, it's exciting to see what kind of uh, state Gordon is in, right? He's been very open about his, his status on social media, about how his stomach is doing, how training has been. And uh, I think he's excited to go out and, and test this at a little higher pace this weekend. Right. And uh, I think, you know, this is um, this is it, isn't it? This is, nobody expects Gordon to just rock up to ADCC in September and just, you know, take on the very best in the world. We we're expecting him to have some, uh, some, some warm-up matches, let's call them. But... It was unexpected to see him coming in and, and taking on Couch in this manner, but we love it, and we'll get into that match a little bit more. And I think that cues us up well. Of course, with Gordon coming back in, he's replacing Nicky Ryan. What about Nicky Ryan? Well, everyone was curious, right, when we heard the news that Nicky was out. Uh, very devastating, of course. You hate to hear a young actor like that having uh, multiple injuries racked up, and it seems like it's not just the one knee he had work done on but another issue uh, so kind of a combined problem here but Nikki himself actually has some things to say about this so let's go ahead and run that clip and see what Nikki told us yeah so uh, it's actually both my knees this time um, so the, le- the one that I posted is actually the leg that I didn't have surgery on um, it's filled up with a bunch of fluid um, literally fluids going like all the way down to my ankle then on my surgery leg um, I can't confirm it yet I still need to get an MRI but I'm fairly confident that you know the repair failed and it will, will uh, require a uh, another surgery yeah I mean you know it sucks it's, I felt like I was just getting into my stride when I first got injured you know I was like each performance I was getting better and better you know first one back with pj was rough it was a little better in the gabriel almeida match and then dante you know i really broke through and, and competed the way i want to um so it sucks but you know i'll work my way back up there 
Now that, of course, would have been Nicky Ryan's first match in over 250 days since that last match against Dante Leon in the summer of 2021. And, uh, man, I mean, it depends on how serious this injury is, but he could be sidelined for potentially over a year. Yeah, I think obviously it depends on the scan and what he wants to do. I do recall him saying in the extended version of this interview that if uh, the meniscus gets taken out, that could be anywhere from a six to twelve week recovery based on uh, you know his performance. So that would be much faster. Of course, the long term degradation of the joint with removing your meniscus at a young age is also an issue. So lots of things going on there. Kind of a tough tough day for for Nicky Ryan. But yeah, it's like he said. He said his doctor warned him. It's like if we take it out, you're pretty much guaranteed arthritis later on. I'm like. We do jujitsu. We're all guaranteed arthritis <laughs> later on. Come that's, on, that's ha- that's already here. It's yeah. already happening in other parts of my body, my hands. But um, we were. I particularly, I was really, and, and, you know, I was looking forward. I was excited for that match, Jacob Couch versus Nicky Ryan. And of course, you know, I'm not upset about Gordon coming in and facing Jacob, but I am upset about the fact that Nicky's out. And Corey, I know that you're you're pretty bummed about that too, right? Yeah, and this was an interesting match, uh, not not least of which because I wanted to see after eight months out uh, what kind of shape Nicky. Ryan was in for ADCC. That's you know six months away. We're looking at ADCC, so he's going to have a short window to uh, to get himself ready for that. Short indeed. Short indeed. Well, fingers crossed, and we see him back on the mat soon. Uh, we got some got some news actually. We got a new event coming to Flow Grappling, and the first event here on our platform will be Mar- May twenty eighth. Finishers sub only has joined the Flow Grappling family. Very excited to announce that the Finishers sub only series of events will have their new home right here on Flow Grappling. Survivor Series Two will be their first event broadcast on uh, on our site, and um, the organizer Zach Maslani of Tenth Planet Bethlehem uh, he tells us that this event is actually going to feature quintet style team versus team matches, but with a little twist. They're going to have some EBI rules overtime in there as well. So if you've ever been, if you've ever seen the quintet team versus teams, always a lot of fun. And, um, you know, the EBI rules is a uh, added a little bit of spice in there to mix things up as well. And finish your sub only. We do have some clips here, by the way. We should yeah, run those now. Yeah. This may be new for some fans on here on Flow Grappling, but this event has a very long and storied history uh, in the area. And it's something of a, a proving ground for up and coming talent. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, some of the biggest names that have come through, we, we see on the screen right now, Daniel Kelly uh, had some great performances over at Finishers. We have Damien Anderson. But I think, you know, what's really interesting is actually that Gordon Ryan has, has made an appearance back in the day, and you'll see him a little bit later in this film. But really, it's been a hub uh, for growth of sub-only jiu-jitsu on the East Coast, and we've seen many, many different talents throw their hat in the ring there. Corey, tell me a little bit more maybe about finishers here. Yeah, I mean, finishers for me was, was one of the, the biggest um, EBI formats in the in the East Coast. It was the, the first tournament to really promote EBI style. And because of that... And if we, you don't recognize him, by the way, that man <laughs> disrobing from the yellow robe there in the white rash guard. Who is that, Corey? That is the 170-pound champion, Gordon Ryan. So, wow. Yeah, back in, uh, back in 2015. And, and they've had a lot of guys come up from that level, right? 2015, Gordon Ryan, Ethan Crellinson, Keith Gricor, and PJ Barch, so uh, all all of the grapplers that maybe maybe uh, are now at their their uh, height of prominence started at, at uh, finishers. So, like we said, it's something of a uh, a proving ground, something of a, uh, a developmental league for big names to break through. And just looking at some of the previous tournament winners, include John Blank. Ethan Crownston, PJ Barch, Keith Krikorian, Amanda Levy, as you mentioned, Gordon Ryan, and more. I love it. And I'd love to see who's coming through next from finishers only. Uh, sub only, excuse me. So, yeah, can't wait to see that one. Well, that's it from the main headlines. We're going to go into a couple of the big stories. And I think the no story is bigger from last week than, of course, the news that Jacob Couch is going to be taking on Gordon Ryan in now the new main event of Tezos, who's number one. And the Hillbilly Hammer. <laughs> Excuse me, the Hillbilly Hammer, not the Hillbilly Hammer. It's not the Kentucky accent in action. Mm, there. But mm. the Hillbilly Hammer is going to take on the ADCC Absolute Champion. And for those of you who have seen the 1975 Oscar winning movie Rocky, you may see some similarities in this situation because in that movie, the heavyweight champion of the world, Apollo Creed, he had a match fall through. And what did he do? He plucked 
an up and coming, an, a contender, a nobody, an unranked boxer from the streets of Philadelphia to take on you know, the heavyweight champ, giving this guy his opportunity. Of course, Rocky Balboa went against the heavyweight world champion. Nobody expected him to win. Nobody expected him to even last against the champ. But that's not the point. He went out there, he gave a gutsy display, and he won the hearts and minds of the fans in the process. Now, nobody is expecting... Great summary of Rocky, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Big fan. Nice, I watched it recently, nice. actually. Yeah, yeah, well done. I watched well done. the whole saga. I watched Rocky 1 through 4. Mm, after, mm. Nothing exists in Rocky canon after, after Rocky 4 for me. But <laughs> it ends in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> but Jacob Couch, number 9 ranked, 185-pound grappler in the world, going up against the three-time ADCC gold medalist. People don't expect him to win, but that's not the point. The point is that all he has to do is go there and put on a good enough show, and that is going to be bigger than winning any tournament for him. Well, you're not wrong about that, but I do think people are counting out Jacob Couch a little bit, right? Um, first of all, he's done his homework. Half of his game represents what Gordon Ryan does. You know, he's he's been open about it. He's watched the DVDs. He's watched the tape. And he's definitely, you can see shades of Gordon in, in Jacob Couch's game. Now, of course, Gordon is always evolving and, and adding new things. But the familiarity could be a great asset for Jacob Couch going into this match. And I, I think, uh, you know, he's got a puncher's chance, right? I know this is a grappling match. <laughs> but Jacob Couch can definitely latch onto a leg and let it rip. So I'm not saying it's likely, but I think it's possibly uh, an outcome that, that could go down. Corey, what are your thoughts on this matchup here? Yeah, it, it, Jacob Jacob Couch has been and and continues to be the people's champ, right? He's he's the the kind of athlete that the fans just like to watch him win. They, they like to watch him succeed. So in moments like like we're watching now, him against William Tackett or him against Roberto Jimenez, when he wins or when he looks good, you know you you can't help but uh, but respect him and especially. For his attitude, right? He did not have to take this match against Gordon Ryan, um, but of course he, he's going to because that's how he is, and that's what people like about him. That's why we like we like to watch him compete. Well, I think the people love him because, like you say, he is he's impressive in victory. He's humble in defeat. He's a big personality. He's got great jujitsu, and I think the most important of all for me is that he's got the courage to take on the most dominant grappler of the last five years when a lot of other people do not. You know, we have been searching for opponents for Gordon Ryan for a very long time. And believe me, it is not easy. A lot of people, all of a sudden, excuses and, and unreasonable demands start coming out when we enter into those conversations. None of that whatsoever from Jacob Couch. We called him, we said, Jacob, this is this is the this is the alternative here. Nicky Ryan is out. What do you think about Gordon Ryan? No hesitation whatsoever. We played the clip last week on the site, and we showed you know the the, the incredible moment of uh, of the Daisy Fresh crew about Heath Pedigo announcing uh, announcing Jacob's new opponent, Gordon Ryan, there in the gym, and there's explosion of emotion and support from his teammates, all so happy for this opportunity for Couch because they understand what it means to go up against somebody like Gordon Ryan, the most successful no-gi grappler of the moment. They understand this opportunity, and they're grasping it, and I love that. I think, and like I said, truth is, Couch doesn't even need to win this match. He just needs to go out there, he needs to look good, and I think people will respect him even more than they do. And like you say, they already love him. True. Let's not forget, and it's a... Uh... It hasn't been talked about that much, but this is a 30-minute match. So this is a real test for Couch in a lot of different ways. You know, of course, there's Gordon Ryan being arguably the greatest Nogi grappler of all time, but a format that he's never competed under before as well, going 30 minutes, going into those deep waters with someone like Gordon uh, pushing you all the way. It, it's going to be a real um, make-or-break moment for for. Uh, couch. It could be where he crosses over right into that next level. Maybe he doesn't take on the W, but maybe informs his his decisions going forward, his strategies, his mental game. Uh, you know, it could be the start of something great for him. And 
I think that uh, love him or hate him, and, and people generally fall on one end of the spectrum with Gordon Ryan, <laughs> he's just strong feelings always. But I think that a lot of people will be watching this match very closely because there is that big question mark about how is Gordon's stomach, how is his physical prowess, how is his jujitsu, what has been happening in the, in the time away since we last saw him have a real match. And I think that this is going to be the opportunity to find out. Friday night live right here on Flow Grappling, you can watch it go down. The only place to watch that match. I can't wait. It's I'm so hyped. Big. Yeah, I can't believe it's just a few days away. Yeah, it is. Literally a few days away. Well, we're talking about uh, an incredible underdog story and a, a huge moment right there. But I think that um, my uh, my attention has been has been caught by this developing rivalry between two up and coming middleweights. Maybe not so. It's not so fair to call one of them an up and comer because he is actually the uh, the current world champion. <laughs> Tynan Dalpera and Mika Galvao, these two phenomenal representatives from the new generation of black belt grapplers. Tynan Dalpera, of course, an incredible year last year, his rookie year as a black belt, capped it off almost one calendar year after getting his black belt, won the 2021 IBJJF World Championships. And on the other end, you have the 18-year-old phenomenon, Mikael Galvao, who made his black belt IBJJF rules debut over the weekend in Curitiba. Now, both men had phenomenal performances. They both competed on the same day, but in different locations. Tynan was in Los Angeles, Mika was in Curitiba, and they had clean sweeps. Yeah, 100% submission rate for both. So, not a bad weekend. Yeah, I'm definitely keeping an eye on this. Uh, it's not a guaranteed clash at Pans, as neither have signed up yet. But my fingers are crossed this is going down in the middleweight division because, like you said, two of the most exciting and already most dominant athletes uh, at the black belt level despite their young years. You mentioned Pans, and I think this is very important to connect these dots because Tynan, we expect to see him at Pans. He won Pans in 2021. He won Worlds in 2021. And we've heard, you know, after his success at the European Championships in February, that he's going to be taking off all the major titles in 2022 as well, Pans and Worlds. Mikhail Galvao, currently, you know, this he, he wasn't even uh, able to compete in IBJJF until last week, his first official tournament. But the gold medal that he got in Curitiba, now gives him enough ranking points that he can sign up for pants. And we expect to see him sign up very, very soon. And of course, after that, we expect to see him go to Worlds. So this is like the initial phase here. Now that both men have been out there, they've been working in different corners of the world, but we see a collision course on the horizon. Now, where exactly that may happen, whether it will happen at pants, whether it will happen at Worlds, we're not sure, but the fun is finding out and watching it develop, right? Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's. Uh, I think it's going to be a rivalry we can watch for a long time. They've met once before. What? Very, very narrow margin loss for what Tynan. What happened that match? Uh, it was tied. I mean, it's back and forth. Really exciting. Mika was definitely coming after Tynan. Tynan, at, I would say, was on the defensive the most he's ever been in his black belt career. Uh, and he ended up losing a decision loss, I want to say. It was at EUG Promotions. And at the very end of the round, in a crazy scramble, Mika managed to like jump into a flying triangle, basically. Didn't finish it, but held on to the end of the timer and then was awarded the win. I, I want to say that was Tynan's only loss last year. Is that, is that correct? Only loss by decision there. Uh, although I would say it was a correct decision. It wasn't a robbery. Mika won that match for sure. Right, right. Um, I just watched it again the other day because it's really, really good. So <laughs> honestly, you know Guy Mendes and Tyne and everybody at AOJ is gunning for Mika, right? They, they know that he is the number one contender for Tynan's current title. And of course, Tynan, being the current number one in the world, has a big old target on his back. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if Mika wants to ascend to that position, if he wants to become Pan Champion, become World Champion, well, of course, he's going to have to get through Tynan to, to get that position. Now, that, that, for me, this is, again, the, the interesting kind of part of this story because I feel like this is the initial phase of a rivalry that could go on for years to, become, uh, years to come because both of these guys, as I've said, they are representatives of the new generation of black belt superstars. They're in the very beginning phase of their black belt careers. And potentially we could see this rivalry go on for years, but what happens here could help set the stage for later encounters. 
What do you think, Corey? Exactly that, because as, as much as Mika may be targeting Tynan, I would imagine Tynan is targeting Mika for exactly the opposite reason, right? He doesn't want Mika to become kind of his boogeyman in this division. Tynan is the number one ranked pound for pound. He's a European champion. He's a pan champion. He's a world champion. He's 44 and one, but that one loss is to Mika Galvao, and you don't want to let that become a slippery slope if you're, if you're Tynan Dalpra. You don't want to let Mika start running away with this rivalry early here. Can we talk about how Mika's competing this weekend at W and O? Oh yeah, <laughs> don't <laughs> like, forget that. <laughs> like Mika won in Brazil last weekend in the Gi, W and O this weekend. Two weeks later, he'll be a pants. Insane, insane work rate. You know, super dominant. But he has a tough challenge, of course, this weekend with Dante Leon uh, being uh, the man across him on the mats. But still, just wanted to throw it out there that Mika is really doing it all. Just won trials a few weeks ago. Yeah. So, yeah, hell of an athlete. I well, there's the other thing as well. Is, of course, we don't know if. Tynan and Mika will face off, or even where if, if they both enter the middleweight division of Pans, because uh, Tynan being the current world champion will have the number one seed in that division, whereas Mika, as he only has 27 points after having collected those points for winning a Kurochiba Open, he will enter probably as one of the lowest seeds in that bracket. Potentially, they could be on the same side of the bracket. They could meet first, second, third round. They could meet in finals. We just don't know. But... What I believe is that whoever emerges the winner at Pans will, for a while at least, hold the title of the best middleweight grappler in the world. And if they enter in the same form as we saw from them last weekend, where they both had that 100% submission rate, this could be the best middleweight showdown we've seen for a long time. Yeah, I'm definitely checking registrations every day. I'll let you guys know the minute that <laughs> they know? both sign up. But uh, that, that to me is the biggest story right now in the IBJJF. So, man, we have so many events coming up. We have so many events. Tezos, who's number one, presented by Fat Tire, goes down this weekend, Friday night, March 25th. The following weekend, April 2nd and 3rd, we have the ADCC West Coast Trials. That should not be a surprise by this point because we have been talking about it for quite some time. Because, just to remind you, this is the biggest ADCC trials in history. Yeah, over a thousand competitors. Some capping out at 256. Is that correct? The correct number where they actually close the division. That's <laughs> insanity. It's going to be the wildest weekend ever. And as we've been hammering home, but it's worth noting once more, whoever wins this thing is just a monster. It's just the, one of the most terrifying grapplers on the planet. Eight wins over the course of two days of ADCC style competition. That person's a beast. That is how you qualify for the ADCC World Championships. Now, this event is going to have over three times the number of competitors as the next biggest ADCC trials. That was the 2021 uh, East Coast trials. But, uh, but this event, I mean, you, you could just, you can feel it. You can feel it from talking to the competitors. You can see it when you, you, know, when you visit the gyms that there is a buzz about West Coast trials. People are hyped for this event. And, well, we bounced around a little bit. We visited some of these gyms, like I said. You know, we, we went in and we watched some of them train. We spoke to some of the athletes. And the energy is very, very special. Let's play this clip as we're talking, the training clip. Because this is just a little bit of what's going on in some of the gyms. And we can talk about this. Because this right here was Daisy Fresh. We've got I've lost count, actually. But we have so many training videos on our website right now. Go to flowgrappling.com. Hit training at, towards the top. And you will see... Some really hardcore, intense no-gi training rounds from inside Pedagog Submission Fighting, a.k.a. Daisy Fresh. From Checkmat La Habra featuring El Monstro. From Brazilian Fight Factory, that is the Checkmat gym here in Austin, Texas, where the Tackett Brothers and Cody Steele train. And, um, well, I mean, you can just see from the intensity. People are, they're, they're training hard for this. Yeah, I love this room, right? We always uh, get a great look at Daisy Fresh, and they never hold back. But the same thing could be said here for uh, Fight Factory, right? The Checkmat affiliate out here where the uh, attack is trained. Uh, they just moved to a new gym. It looks amazing from the footage here. Yeah, I, I big think it, brand new gym. Look at that. Uh, look at this. Is that Caleb, by the way? Is it that is. That was Caleb, man. He's getting big. But Andrew Tackett. Andrew Tackett, the middle of the Tackett brothers, because you've got Caleb, Andrew, and William. Well, you were filming this, Corey, right? And Andrew, he's something of a showman, huh? He he loves the camera for sure. He he showed us uh, three flying triangles in sequence. Um, he, he's definitely uh, looking around, 
Here we go. <laughs> he's definitely looking to hit that tournament at trials. I'm amazed yeah. that he's competing in the 66 kilogram division as well. I spoke to his brother about this. I was like, man, Andrew's going down in weight, huh? And he said, yeah, you know, he's basically just stopped eating cake at 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> that's his weight cap. But there's William. He's got a lot of muscle on him. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that's all he needs to do to get down to 66, but <laughs> more credit to him. If he pulls it William Tackett, of course, took silver at the ADCC East Coast Trials in uh, Atlantic City. And this is another silver medalist in the red shorts. You've got Elder Cruz, a.k.a. El Monstro, also competing this weekend on Tezos, who's number one. And he's going to be going back and looking for uh, gold this time in the ADCC West Coast Trials. And I don't know about you, but I feel like he, he, with his wrestling, he could do it. He really does have the perfect style for ADCC. Uh, no one can take him down, right? Even Nicky Rod failed to. So uh, I think El Monstro poses a serious threat for his division at Trials. Uh, also, like, you know, a well-rounded submission game. He's not one-dimensional, but I think his strength of wrestling is tailor-made for ADCC. His submission awareness and defense is going to be crucial as well, right? Because with his wrestling, wrestling is such an important factor in ADCC rules. I think, like you said, you know, his combination of the, his powerful wrestling plus that submission game is a, is a really, really um, a powerful tool in ADCC rules. Right, Corey? Exactly. And, and one thing that I, I really got out of watching all these rounds is just a reminder of why I love the ADCC rule set. And it's it's so hard to, sco to score in this rule format that you don't want to get scored on. And because of that, you have to present your back. You have to make dumb decisions um, as, as a way to, to not give up points, right? So you're it's constantly exposing your back or, or exposing yourself to submission. Now, you mentioned there about how they're training. And I definitely noticed that when we were inside the gyms and from watching all these, uh, these training rounds that we have, is that um, people have definitely adapted the way that they roll and the, especially the rounds that they've been doing, right? Even, even going so far as to focus much more on wrestling, King of the Hill style drills, and especially the positions that they would not normally concede. And, and that's definitely because they are becoming a little bit more aware of the rules that they need to compete under, right? If you pay attention for it, you, you really watch people fighting for top position and never getting put square on their back or flat on their back, uh, always turtling up and really being even reluctant to, to go to their guard unless they are pulling guard directly very interesting very interesting to see that i think that that, that general level of education among the competitors has, has uh, i mean it's been an ongoing process now but i don't think there's um there's no excuse anymore to not know the adcc rules right true and a, a huge uh credit to that goes to mo jasson for putting out various rules seminars and uh, videos out there helping educate people that may not have access to uh, a deeper understanding right because it's one thing to read the rule book and another to see it play out in action and all the things that take place like real time on the map so you can look at Diego Hayes' performance and really pick up the subtleties of how to game, or not game, but to, to master the ADCC format, right? Where yeah. I'm thinking of the final there with Pato, where instead of uh, continuing to pursue the takedown after Pato Turtle, he got back up knowing he was winning the wrestling exchanges, therefore maybe looking to get that two points, right? So interesting stuff. Uh, I think it will create uh, the awareness that is the best trials yet because all these competitors will be playing to the strengths of the format. Just taking a little look at some of the YouTube comments here uh, while we uh, have a little break between the action. And and it's very interesting to see that, you know, obviously people are very excited for the match between uh, Jacob and Gordon. But a, an interesting comment here that I noticed about Daisy Fresh is packed. And that is a very, very good observation. I've got to say that is one of the the smallest rooms, but the most packed training sessions I've ever seen. And, and we were, I was talking to Trey about this because he was there and filmed that amazing vlog that you've probably seen by now. Jacob Couch training and, and, and getting ready for who's number one. Andrew Wiltsey just shredding through people's guards in preparation for West Coast trials. And he said, man, he said, unless your back is to the wall, you know, you're filming somebody and you've just got people crashing into you. You've got people just like barreling through your legs while you're trying to just film. It's, uh, yeah, they need a brand new gym. They need a big <laughs> brand new gym. Hopefully they'll get one. It looks hectic, but it's part of the charm, at least from the viewer standpoint. Yeah, you know, I don't right. know. I don't know about the the guy working there. I've I've yet to actually film inside of Daisy Fresh, but it does look chaotic to say the least. Speaking of ADCC trials, though, we uh, we obviously we've learned a lot from watching them roll, but we've spoken to the athletes as well, and I think that um, well, Corey, cue us up. What have we got here? Yeah, so we're going to hear from uh, Andrew Wilty, Jacob Couch, uh, Cody Steele, Andrew Tackett, William Tackett. Kind of about uh, a lot of these guys already competed at the East Coast Trials and how they're adjusting or preparing for uh, for the West Coast Trials. If I can do it and I can compete at that, I think people are going to have a problem because it's a six-minute match. 
And me for six minutes is not fun. It's one of those, like, I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me, motherfucker, for six minutes. Six minutes is my favorite time because you don't have to hold anything back. And the rule set of ADCC is very much in favor of my style. I'm rounded. I have really good takedowns, okay? I have... An, a, I'm quoting Flo Grappling here. I have an unpassable guard, okay? And then my, my me on top, I'm probably top three best no-gi guard passer in the world. There are some fucking heavy, heavy-duty contenders in 77, though. 77 is stacked. That's the, if I'm going to win the trials, that's the trials I want to win. I want to, I want to be the best out of the most people. That's why I'm doing this whole thing. I'm very, I'm, uh, I'm very appreciative and very grateful, but that's what I want. I want to be the best. So I have to do things that are of someone who wants to be that. And that would be winning the biggest trials with the most talented people and the most attention on it of all time. So that's what I'm coming to do. Um, I think with that tournament, like not only it's like is the rule set, it's like wrestling, it's like you just have to be a really mentally tough and it's six minutes, but it's six minutes of like go, you know, so you have to be ready with a great uh, gas tank for that tournament. Man, I, I'm excited for it. I wish they could put more people in it, honestly. The more people, the better. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm going in, I'm just going to go out there, I'm going to have fun and Everyone, like I said, everyone's blank faces to me. I don't care. I'm taking everybody, not anyone lightly. I tell William all the time. I said, last trials was last trials. This is uh, the next one. I was like, same thing. We just run through everybody. Don't take anyone lightly. And we take everyone serious and we just go forward. We're both like really, really extra motivated. You know, I got like basically as close as you can get to winning it without winning it. <laughs> you know, I uh, made it all the way to the finals and then made it all the way through the round almost scored, almost won, and then went overtime, had an extremely close overtime, and then lost by a decision. So that, that's kind of as close, to, in my opinion, as you can get. And I feel like I performed to my best. I just wasn't good enough that day. So um, I think that putting in the extra work, putting the extra time, learning the rules a little bit better. I think I'm a better version of myself this time, which, you know, mathematically never works in jujitsu, right? But uh, if, I, if the jujitsu math adds up, then hopefully I take the gold this time. So I'm gonna do my best. All these things that I work for aren't gonna happen unless I take risks. So I'm gonna take those risks. I'm gonna do those crazy stunts. I'm gonna be looking to, you know, oh, what if I just pass? But what if I do this instead? Might not secure the pass, but it might create a scramble, it might tie out my partner, might get some flashy, you know, woes and that's what I'm gonna go for. I'm going for the flashy woes. I'm trying to I'm trying to, you know, build my confidence. You know, I build my confidence by basically pushing myself. I'm like, oh sure, I just pulled that off. And then that's when I really start to get in my stride. So I'm gonna really try to stunt on people and I'm gonna try to, you know, create fireworks with my movement. Um, I'm pretty acrobatic, so I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to be like a gymnast out there while rolling. So yes, expect me to do some crazy stuff. I'm not gonna tell you what I'm doing because I don't wanna give it away, but expect me to do some crazy stuff. going down in Kissimmee, Florida, just outside of Orlando. Currently scheduled for a five-day tournament, April 5th through 10th, although may start on the 6th, depending on the number of competitors. But they already said, apparently, the number of people who have signed up, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think registration is actually still open, but 
This is going to be the biggest pan championships in IBJJF history. That's definitely what they're saying. Uh, I just checked a moment ago. Registration is at 87%. So if you're on the fence, I would definitely sign up today. Don't wait. There's not much more time left. And uh, yeah, it's looking like it's going to be massive, absolutely massive tournament. Also, just check. No Miko or Tynan yet, but yes. uh, a lot of a lot of exciting athletes always show for pans. They know it's a kind of a prequel to the World Championships, right? It's where they really test their final plans and then regroup for a few weeks later for that world title. So I'm excited. Can't wait to be out there. And uh, it's great to have the objective season in full swing. Yeah, uh, me too, actually. Um, I, I feel I'm just scanning through some of these divisions as well. And they're, um, these are big divisions. You know, there's um, 15, 16, 19, 20, uh, not 250 people per division as you get in the ADCC trials. But we're talking just black belts. Just black belts. There's like 20, 25 people in some of these divisions. And high-level guys as well. I'm, you know, very excited to see some of uh, some of the big names compete, and I'm absolutely certain that we'll see more names coming through onto that list as registration, as you said, is still open. So I'm excited to see some showdowns here, some brand new names, of course. There's always some black belts who are promoted at the end of 2021 who will be making their pan debut, and um, maybe even some veterans coming back as well. So that's taking place April 5th uh, to the 10th, and then. At the end of April, we've got a really big event taking place here on Flow Grappling. We've got the BJJ Stars from Brazil. BJJ Stars, uh, man, if you don't know about this event, you need to. You need to know because it is, Chase, correct me if I'm wrong. I would say it's probably Brazil's biggest and best professional jiu-jitsu event, right? I think that's a fair statement. You know, they've been around for a few years now. And uh, one thing I love about the show is that they've consistently experimented with their, their format a little bit. They've gone gi, no gi. They've had Grand Prix, super fights. And their latest installment is going to feature the new uh, rules for the gi that we Ooh, talked yeah. about last week a little bit with limiting 50-50 to 20 seconds and then standing them up. And also limiting the time spent in lapel guard if you're just stalling. Uh, we have a video if you want a little further explanation, but that just goes to show that they're not they're not satisfied just having the same athletes come out do the same things. They want to see uh, jiu jitsu at its highest. So the card looks great for the next show coming up at, uh, later this spring, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, this is um this is just a little highlight video. Some of the some of the moments from previous uh, BJJ Stars events, and um, they they always feature the biggest and the best names from Brazil. They have a mix of both gi and no gi matches on their uh, on their events. And something interesting: the no gi matches will use ADCC rules. And as you mentioned, they're constantly tweaking the rules for the for the gi matches to eliminate these stalling positions and to keep the action moving. And not just that, but they also they also invite some very very big names. And the list of names that they have. Uh, confirmed for the upcoming event at the uh, at the end of April. Well, there's two things that we should mention. The first is that they've got an eight-man Grand Prix, a middleweight Grand Prix. And this is a tournament. And maybe you want to bring up the graphics so that we can see this. Uh, here we go. Look at this. They, they've got six of the names announced so far. Leandro Lowe, Isaac Ibaiens, Leo Lara, Pedro Machado, Roberto Jimenez, and Mauricio Oliveira with two more names to come. I'm not sure. I'm trying to guess based on the outline the silhouette. <laughs> like who is the, whose ears are those or whose haircut is that? Any ideas? <laughs> Man, I, hard to say. Right? I, it's hard to tell. I I don't think he's heavy enough, but top right gives me a little bit of Mateus Gabriel. I see but, the same thing, but I don't know. That'd be a big jump up and wait for him. He talked about doing that. But oh, I'd love to see it. That would be interesting. You never know. But yeah, you've got Leandro Lowe and Isaac Baez, two black belt world champions. Roberto Jimenez, people's champ. Pedro Machado and uh, up and coming black belt. Leo Lara and Mauricio Oliveira, two very, very tough local guys from Sao Paulo. This is a very exciting card. And uh, yeah, the Nogi um, super fights that they've started to announce, they just announced it today that Felipe Pena will be taking a match oh, wow. against Enrique Sacconi. Sacconi, of course, won the ADCC trials in Brazil and qualified for ADCC in the under 99 kilogram division. Uh, Felipe Pena, do we need to explain who Felipe <laughs> Pena is? I don't think so. ADCC absolute champion in 2017 and will return in 2022 to take on uh, the 99 and over kilogram division because he wants that showdown with Gordon Ryan. So can't wait. Can't wait. All that plus more happening on April 30th. BJJ Stars 8. 
That's and, like a week before Brazilian Nationals too. So oh my god, it's so yeah, much jujitsu. That's, yeah. that's crazy. This is it. Amazing. Well, that's pretty much it from today's show. A uh, lot of a uh, lot of news to get through, but the big news is, of course, that don't forget. We're not going to let you forget, but don't forget, Tezos, who's number one, presented by Fat Tire, taking place this weekend, right here on Flow Grappling. Gordon Ryan versus Jacob Couch in the main event. All right, let's pick one. Let's pick one. Uh, oh. Pick one match that you're very excited for from this weekend's card. Corey, if you want to go first. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see it got promoted uh, up. No, no, let's go Mickey Miki Galvao and Dante Leon. Ah, you stole ah. my pick. You <laughs> son of a gun, that was my pick. <laughs> okay, so you're excited for that one. Is there any others that you may be excited for? I mean, obviously, Gordon Couch, right, has captured my interest. Uh, but Keith Krikorian versus uh, Gabriel Souza, I think, is a secret banger. I've got my money on that one as potentially being a match of the night. I just can't see how that's going to be a bad match. Obviously, I'm very excited to see the Noki debut of uh, Nicholas Marigali. Yeah, there's that too. But wow. uh, yeah, I think this every match is, is really great. We've got three free prelims that will be able to available to watch on YouTube and Facebook, as well as right here on Floor Grappling. And then, of course, the main card, Gabriel Souza versus Keith Krikorian, Heisen Rita versus Elder Cruz, Marigali versus Arnaldo Maidana, Dante Leon versus Mikael Galvao, and Gordon Ryan versus Jacob Couch. Only available to watch here in Flow Grappling. Guys, we'll see you next week where we'll talk about all the results from this weekend's show. Don't miss it.